And again, I just want to say, for those people who think that there's craziness out there, I remember standing there as a 19 and 20 year old for a lot of those things, moments, and thinking, is this what the NBA is like? <laughs> and, and the truth is nothing was ever like that again. We'll get to that in a minute. But I do want to talk about your integration into the Bulls, Michael Jordan a little bit, because we saw a clip earlier in the show with that. And, and look, again, from being just even a young pup covering you guys, I used to tell people, they're teammates and they're brothers out on the court, but it took a lot of work to get there. And, and, and I always say, People think that leaders today are like, oh, LeBron James is hard on his teammates or whatever. And I always say, right, but Mon Michael Jordan punched Steve Kerr in the face during a practice, <laughs> right? How demanding was MJ on you as a teammate? Not too much. Okay. <laughs> not, too, not, not too much. I you mean, got off late. The Scotty probably knew better than I do because him and Michael <laughs> hung out a lot. Right. You know, me and Mike and Scotty, we really didn't hang out too much during the season. Right. I think I was, I was more like the loner in the group, but. Um, these guys had a special bond. They was with each other for six, seven years beginning before I got there, and um, it was it was fun to watch those two guys really interact with each other. I mean, really, they play against each other in practice, at home, playing cards or doing anything that has something to do with physical uh, tasks. And uh, when I watch them in practice and in the games, man, sometimes I sit back and watch. And I'm looking at Ristakoff, I'm looking at, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. there's people that's, that's so gracious on the court. And it's, sometimes you just have to just, oh, God, you know, I'm like a little kid sometimes looking at these guys. And I'm like the one who used to, used to kick their ass, you know, throw them on the floor, <laughs> punch them and stuff like that. Now I'm playing with these guys. So I praised them even more when I was with these guys. But like I said, those days, with, uh, they actually pretty much saved my life, pretty much. Scotty had done so much for me in Chicago sometimes when I was, doing my crazy stuff back home and I had mm -hmm. to come back and they reel me back in and get my focus back on, on, on the game at hand. But uh, they did a lot for me as being in Chicago. They actually opened the doors for me in their hearts. So, and, and the city too. You know what, I, I think it was great for us. Um, that worked out two ways. We right. realized that Dennis was looking forward to rejuvenating his career. And it was important for us to get back to being a championship team. So we all needed and wanted the same thing at the end. But what Dennis really brought to us as a team was his leadership and his hard work. Um, but you had to work stuff out between you guys. And, you know, I, I asked you, oh, how hard was MJ on you? But you guys were all hard on each other in different ways. And you, you tested them with how much that they would accept, oh, right? Yeah. I tested them, but I don't think they realized that I was doing those certain things off the court mm -hmm. as much as I was. But oh. uh, <laughs> did, you I was, did you not realize it? <laughs> you know what? We did realize it. Dennis <laughs> was living two different lives. Yes. <laughs> but, we also understood that, you know, he was so professional out on the basketball court. I mean, we knew Dennis stayed out to 5 a.m. Someone would tell us, like, Dennis just got back in from Vegas, but... Madonna was on TV yeah. talking about having sex with him. Yeah. So you reali I mean, they was, realized it. Madonna, it was Carmen Electra, <laughs> it was oh, This is a whole big circus, man. Yeah. So, I mean, he brought a lot of... Uh, social media right to our face, face quick to, to he was be viral before social media yes. that's right. what, he was right? definitely before his time yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was good though i, I think i think the, the stars of that line i think god brought us together for a reason mm -hmm. and it's funny though scotty could say something like this as far as, far as that we never really talk off the court the only time we really actually talk off the court is like we go to a restaurant mm -hmm. and we didn't realize this but we formed a triangle in a restaurant really <laughs> <laughs> We actually, Mike would be over here, MJ, Scott would be over there, Dennis. and I'll be over here. We had our whole security people with us, but we right. never really interact with each other. We had a triangle going right there, 24/7 <laughs> in a restaurant, you know. So, but uh, but I guess I would never take those days back in. Oh my god! Oh right. I mean, I'm like that was like. Well, ooh. this then gets to how they ended, right? And mm. look, you saw a little bit of it in the clip. Right. If management hadn't decided this is Phil's last year, which sounds insane every time I say it out mm. loud, and therefore you guys decided, well, we don't want to do it without Phil. How much longer could the dynasty have gone on? I had no say so. I'm like Scotty Helen this one. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, no you, I would, if I would you just guys together, I when you look at the landscape of the NBA, if it had been you and Phil and MJ and Dennis, 
How many more championships could you have won? I would probably say at least two. Okay. I would say at least two. I would I would have loved to have challenged ourselves to a point to where someone could defeat us. Mm -hmm. um, the teams that were giving us the most trouble, Utah Jazz meaning sure. and more in the finals, they were just as old or older oh, than us. Right. right. <laughs> Which gives me the sense that right, we probably could have ran a couple, three more more years in terms of teams that we could beat on the West Coast. Right, and also there was a lockout, right? Which lets you yes. rest your old tired bones. That's it. That, that, that makes me mad, man, because I said, <laughs> God, I'm like, can we rewind time? Because we had legs to, <clears throat> for 50 games. We had legs yeah. for 50 games. My God, and I'm like, who really screwed this up? Right. I mean, <laughs> Somebody screwed this up because I mean, I'm like, oh my God. I think it about was your Scottie, record. Was Scotty, Michael, <laughs> Phil, Jerry Krause, or I don't know, I, I, whatever. Do you want to tell him who screwed it up? I, I don't know who screwed it up. I don't really know who screwed it up. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think we all knew going into that last season yep. that that was the end. So yeah. no one really screwed it up. The, it was yeah. going to be screwed up at the end. and. We just have to accept that. I just know what your record was in 98 that season, so I'm thinking about what your record would have been in a lockout shortened season. Probably 50 and 0. Right? 50, <laughs> probably 50 and 0. I'll predict 50. Right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN Plus.